Good morning. It's Friday and it's a beautiful day. A lot of our cold has gone away. So we had very cold weather for this time of year and now it's getting warmer. And who knows next week what we'll be back to. So we just, everything is impermanent. The weather is definitely a good teacher for this. So we are reading now. We'll read and then we'll sit for a while. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of good contemplation material in this book. <clears throat> the book I'm reading from is from by a new book by Pema Chodron, How We Live is How We Die. And so far, her chapters are short and wonderful and I think there are a lot of good, um, good stories in this, in this book. And her, her tradition is Tibetan and she's an American teacher. She's in her late eighties now. So she has good stories. She's been around for a long time with a lot of teachers, a lot of experience. So I'm not going to read the whole book, but right now I'm I'm I've already I'm right now I'm reading uh, on the third chapter. So we've read all of it so far. But then I think we I'll skip around and find uh, find sections in the book to read, so you can get the book and read it yourself. But we'll we'll take a taste of it, a good taste. So chapter three is called Passing Memory. And you can meditate while I'm reading if you like. Uh, you can just let this be part of your meditation practice. Passing Memory. During some of the retreats I lead, we recite this verse in the morning. Like a shooting star, a visual fault, a candle flame, an illusion, a dewdrop, a water bubble, a dream, lightning, a cloud. Regard conditioned dharmas like that. This verse is meant to impress impermanence on our minds so we can get used to its presence in our lives and so we can learn to become friends with it. Conditioned dharmas means anything that has come into being, anything that has begun and is in the process of changing, and at a certain point will end. In other words, all phenomena. Everything under the sun has a fleeting quality of a dewdrop or a flash of lightning. At the retreats, I recommend that people memorize this chant so they can say it to themselves and contemplate it as they walk around the land and when they return home. Realizing the fleeting nature of everything and the freshness of every moment is equivalent to realizing that we're always in a state of transition, an in-between state, what we call a bardo, a few years ago, I was having lunch with Anam Tubton Rinpoche, a Tibetan teacher I admire greatly. I brought with me a whole list of questions about the bardo and what the Tibetan Book of the Dead says about it. I was asking him my questions, and at one point he said to me, you know, Ani Pema, we're always in the bardo. I had heard this notion expressed by Trungpa Rinpoche, but I wanted to hear Anam Tubton's explanation. So I said, well, Rinpoche, you and I are sitting here having lunch. How is this the bardo? I've written about this elsewhere, but his response made such an impression on me that I think it bears repeating. This morning, he said, I went to the art store with my friend to buy materials for doing calligraphy. We bought some ink and brushes and paper. Now that experience seems like a past lifetime, a whole lifetime of its own. 
It had a beginning, which was like being born. Then it lasted for a while and went through different phases, looking around the store, picking out the supplies, paying for them. Then my friend and I parted and that lifetime came to an end. Now it's all just a memory and that lifetime, whoops, and here I am eating lunch with you, enjoying another lifetime. Soon this time, lifetime will come to an end and turn into another memory. And this process of beginnings and endings, births and death will never cease. It will go on and on and on forever. We are always in a bardo because impermanence never takes a break. It's an interesting way to look at it. I like that. <laughs> there is never a moment when we're not in transition. And believe it or not, this is good news. The elements that make up this unique moment of your life all came into being at some point. Soon those elements will disperse and this experience will be over. Right now you may be sitting in your chair reading this book or driving in your car and listening to the audio version. Wherever you are, the light has its own particular quality. You are smelling particular smells and hearing particular sounds in the background. An hour ago, you were probably doing something completely different, something you can only partially remember. An hour from now, this current experience will also be a memory. We're always in an intermediate state between the past and the future, between the memory of what happened before and the approaching experience that will soon become memory as well. My lunch that day with Anam Tupton will never happen again. Even if I have another lunch with him in the same place and we have the same meal and talk about the same subjects, we will never be able to recreate what happened last time. That hour is gone forever. Contemplating continual change is a poignant experience. It can feel sad or scary. Sometimes when I'm in a long retreat and every day I do pretty much the same thing, I suddenly realize it's Sunday again? How could that possibly be? It w was just Sunday. I want time to slow down. The speed at which it moves just takes my breath away. This feeling is ex especially strong in my old age. When I think back to my childhood, the summer was so long. Now it's over in the blink of an eye. It's good to let that feeling sink in. That vulnerable, tender feeling needs to be felt and allowed in. I love that part. That vulner vulnerable, tender feeling needs to be felt and allowed in. I think a lot of times we want to push that away, how, how fast time is passing. Feeling sad or anxious is natural when we reflect on the passage of time and the fading of all of our experiences. In the evocative words of Trungpa Rinpoche, all our experiences are passing memory. It can be heartbreaking to notice how death and loss are occurring continually. It can make us feel shaky to realize we are always in a gap. But these feelings aren't a sign of something going wrong. We don't have to push them away. We don't have to label them as negative or reject them in any way. Instead, we can develop open-heartedness to our painful emotions around impermanence. We can learn to sit with these feelings, to become curious about them, to see what vulnerability has to offer. In that very fear, in that very melancholy is our compassionate heart, our immeasurable wisdom, our connection to all other living beings on this planet, each of whom are going through their own bardos.
When we stay present with our transitory experience and all that its fleetingness evokes, we get in touch with our braver self, our deepest nature. <clears throat> that is an incredible paragraph. I feel like uh, I've been going through exactly what she's describing. One of the students at the Gampo Abbey Bardo retreat had a profound and courageous way of working with this kind of sadness and discomfort. Being in the gap is uncomfortable, she said. It feels like it's not where you want to be, but I think it's precisely where you do want to be. You want to find a way to rest with that, and it requires a lot of bravery, intention, and commitment. What she said captures for me the spirit of training and embracing impermanence. Instead of seeing our sadness as a problem, we can look at it as a sign that we're onto something. We're beginning to get the mood or quality of why we don't like to hang out in groundlessness. We're directly tasting our resistance to the continual flow of life. If we keep accustoming ourselves to being present with this flow, we will gradually develop confidence that we're big enough to hold the sadness. We will gradually learn to trust reality rather than hope for success. This is a matter of training, of building up a muscle day by day. Practicing this new approach to our existence will enable us to meet whatever happens, wanted or unwanted, health or sickness, life or death, with cheerfulness and grace. Well, that chapter that chapter was perfect for me. My goodness, that's chapter three in the book. I think I need to read this one, That this chapter every day. Um, yeah, there's a lot of insight just in reading that chapter and going through this experience of, uh, that has been, there's been a lot of insight for me and she's just described it perfectly. But we have to keep working with it. Impermanence, impermanence, impermanence. And that might be, you know, when we think about ending our suffering, um, that's one of the things we have to come to grips with. That's one of the pieces of reality that we can, we'll only be truly happy and at peace when we come to grips with impermanence and suffering and uh, no sense. So it's good to know, it's good to know that we have really fine company to go through them with. So it's a good time for insight. So why don't we sit? And we can use the time while we're sitting to just let those thoughts. Oh, I did want to repeat one thing because she said she wants her students to memorize it. The beginning of the chapter. So I think it's something um, you, can, you can develop your own thing to memorize it from your own yard, from just walking or the, on the walks you take. During some of the retreat, retreats I lead, we recite this chant in the morning. Like a shooting star, a visual fault, a candle flame, an illusion, a dewdrop, a water bubble, a dream, lightning, a cloud. Regard conditioned dharmas like that. So, so you can even walk around your you know, take a walk and think, see things, the leaves falling, the light, the clouds passing overhead. Just list some things as you walk. Regard conditioned dhammas or dharmas 
like that. So regard all conditioned, all conditioned things. They're just passing, just like all those natural elements. So let's sit together on this beautiful day. Just be with the breath. Let your body lift up, even if you're lying on your back, just lift your spine, stretch it out, roll your shoulders back. Be aware of your body breathing and let your awareness of your breath focus around your nostrils or you can choose focusing on the belly as it rises and falls slightly as you breathe. Just pick that spot and we're just being aware of the incoming breath and the outgoing breath. Just be aware of the coming and going, the rising and falling. Feel yourself in the present moment. Feelings in the body come and go.
coming back to your breath. If you get sidetracked or distracted, just keep coming back to the rising and falling, the impermanent nature of all phenomena, of all conditioned things. Now as we end our practice together, remember to send out loving kindness today. Be thinking not only of your, be sure to include yourself first of all, be kind to yourself, nurture yourself. Think of your loved ones, think of all other beings, and especially send out loving kindness to people in times of war, tragedy, environmental disasters, people having the shock of their lives being torn apart with, without any, any notion of something like that coming into their lives. Uh, impermanence is certainly very real so think of people in, in Ukraine, in other parts of the world, and send out loving kindness and friendliness and compassion. Remember, 
And for most of us, we have such a blessed life. So may everything we do and say and think today be done not only for our own benefit, but for the benefit of all other living beings everywhere. So thank you for being a big part of my practice and have a beautiful day. And then pass on to the next moment and the next. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'll see you on Tuesday. <laughs>